welcome to today's lecture today we will be studying about the deep peroneal nerve the deep peroneal nerve is also called as anterior tibial nerve so the deep peroneal nerve is present in the anterior compartment of the leg it is the nerve of the anterior compartment of the leg and the dorsum of foot so it is one of the two terminal branches of the common peroneal nerve it corresponds to the posterior interosseous nerve of the forearm its root value is ventral primary rami of l4 l5 s1 and s2 segments of the spinal cord so in this slide you can see so this is the tibia this is the fibula tibia in the me medial side fibula in the lateral side so in between the anterior intermuscular septum and above the interosseous membrane so this is the anterior compartment of the leg so here you are having the deep peroneal nerve so it is present along with the anterior tibial artery so in this picture what you can see this is the deep peroneal nerve which is al lying along with the anterior tibial artery so it begins at the lateral side of the neck of the fibula so here what you can see this is a common peroneal nerve this is the dividing into superficial peroneal and the deep peroneal nerve so it enters the the deep peroneal nerve enters the anterior compartment of the leg by piercing the anterior intermuscular septum so what is having here this is the anterior intermuscular septum so it is piercing the anterior intermuscular septum it then pierces the extensor digitorum longus and comes to lie next to the anterior tibial artery so if you see the relation of this nerve along with the artery the nerve is lying lateral to the artery in the upper one third of the leg and the lower one third of the leg and it is lying anterior to the artery in the middle one third of the leg it is said that in the middle one third of the leg the nerve hesitates to cross the artery from lateral to medial side so this is the medial side this is the lateral side so here you can see on the upper one third lower one third of the leg it is lying lateral to the anterior tibial artery in middle one third it is lying anterior to it so the nerve hesitates to cross the artery from lateral to medial side so it goes back to the lateral side of the artery hence deep peroneal nerve is also referred to as nervous hesitans n e r v u s nervous h e s i t a n s hesitans later the nerve ends in front of the ankle by dividing into lateral and medial terminal branches so this is the lateral terminal branch this is the medial terminal branch so the lateral terminal branch it turns laterally and ends in a pseudo ganglion so they are having a so this is a pseudo ganglion which is lying deep to the extensor digitorum brevis muscle so the branches proceed from the pseudo ganglion and they supply the extensor digitorum brevis muscle and the tarsal joint whereas the medial terminal branch they end by supplying the skin adjacent to the first interdigital cleft and the proximal joint of the big toe so this is the first interdigital cleft which is lying between the great toe and the first toe so it supplies the skin over this region now coming to the branches which is been given by the deep peroneal nerve so one is the it gives the muscular branches for the muscles in the anterior compartment of the leg that is for the tibialis anterior extensor hallucis longus extensor digitorum longus peroneus tertius then it is supplying the extensor digitorum brevis muscle in the dorsum of the foot then the cutaneous branches supply the adjacent side of the first as well as the second toe that is the first interdigital cleft this area then it also gives the articular branches to the ankle joint 
tarsal joint tarso metatarsal joint and the metatarso phalangeal joints now coming to clinical importance of deep peroneal nerve it can lead to food drop so what you can see in this picture this is called the food drop so here the anterior compartment of the leg all these muscles that is tibialis anterior extensor hallucis longus extensor digitorum uh, longus all these muscles will be paralyzed also what you can see here the cutaneous distribution which is supplying the interdigital cleft between the first great toe and the first toe so here also there will be sensory loss so the food drop can occur if there is any bacterial infection or viral infection or like peripheral neuritis or else if there is any trauma to the deep peroneal nerve thank you for watching